Hello YouTube friends. I'm nothing if not persistent. I'm going to have a try at filming outdoors again. There's a lot of sort of hover flies buzzing around. There's a lot of noise. <coughs> Let's see if we can just identify all these noises. The first one is the jackdaws and the rooks crowing. It's a constant backdrop to any time you're outdoors at the last homely house is rooks. I can hear the, this hovery bee thing buzzing. Two of them. They're a bit like the spy flies from, um, I don't like the look of them, from um, Dark Materials. I wish they'd go away. Rooks then. So every now and then you'll be able to hear Eileen kicking off because that's what she does from time to time. Uh, especially when I come outside. I'm surprised she isn't, hasn't started now because I've just come out. You hear my hens, maybe. The sound of the curlew in the distance, which is an absolutely beautiful sound. Don't like you fly, go away. Now, I went into the shed to find some paint and the only one I've got about that much of this and way, way back in the mists of time, this is what I painted my chairs with. Uh, well, I, I, I made two chairs, Ikea kits, ooh, a million years ago. And this is the paint that's left over from that. And it's not pink and it's not particularly lime green. It's a sort of acid yellow. So we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the brood box, the bigger box, and see if I like it. And then if I've got enough, I'll paint the supers as well. So let's get set up for some painting. I'm going to try really, really hard not to get um, paint on me because I'm a terrible uh, messy painter. So I'm just going to put these here. I need four, don't I? Three's no good, Kate. Oh, dear me. Let's just get set up and see how we go. Okay, I'll get one more of those. Well, maybe that'll do. And then I need something to open this with. I'm just going to put these up. I don't want to get paint on this. I'm a messy painter. If I don't get paint on myself, I'll be very, very surprised. There we go. Now, let's see if we like it. I like it. I really like it. But it's, it's not that I like it. It's just it's what I've got. I did have blue, but I don't want to paint the beehive blue. Okay then, so I've had my brush soaking uh, to keep it um, nice and supple. The brush is fine, absolutely first class. And then, put that in there. I've got this cloth here in case I spill any on me. And let's see how we go. Let's see if, if we like this. If we don't like it, I think we're up the creek really. Oh. Oh, I do like it. I like it. Yes, I like it. Well, I liked it when I bought it for the um, for the chairs. So it's the same colour as those two chairs. And once all this um, restricting shopping restrictions are off, I'll be able to buy it again if I ever want to make any more chairs. Because I had an idea to get two more. And I have four chairs that matched but had different cushions on. Now, I'll do a fair bit and we'll see what we think. So I'm risking this today. I, I tried filming the other day. <laughs> it's just windy. It's not windy. It's very still today. So I'm really hopeful that we can, um, we can have this chat outside. It's so quiet. I mean, apart from all those noises I've just listed. There's some lovely birds singing there. The rooks seem to have quietened down a bit. When I first lived here, there was uh, a lot of Scots pines. <laughs> oh, that was a duck. <laughs> uh, in the front of the house here, in the front woods, uh, they've all since um, 
blown down in storms or been felled because they were dangerous. But the rooks all lived there. It was a huge rookery. And then, if you were outdoors then, you just couldn't hear yourself talk. You just couldn't speak. Because of the noise of the rooks, especially in the spring this time, when all the babies were, all the chicks were making that horrible... Well, it's not horrible to them. They probably... Uh, um, for, to a mummy rook, it's probably a wonderful sound. But it's just like a high-pitched sort of mewling sort of sound. You can also hear my hens just laid an egg down there. You hear that? That's a hen just telling me she's laid an egg. Do you want to know why they do that? I mean, really, is anybody interested? There's a reason why they make that cackling noise when they've just laid an egg. Go on, I'll tell you, because I've started now. <laughs> Poultry are jungle fowl. They originated in dense jungle. And the only um, reason why anything exists is to reproduce itself. It's the truth. That's the only reason for life, if you think about it. You know, um, flowers are making more flowers by creating seeds so that they can make more of themselves. Trees too. Animals all just want to reproduce. Um, everything just wants to reproduce itself. That's the reason for life. Everything else we do is just an add-on. It's a cheery thought, isn't it? Anyway, if you go back, you know, hundreds and thousands of years when uh, poultry, jungle fowl, uh, first, uh, were first evolving, then um, it, was very, it was very dense <coughs> undergrowth. And they couldn't see uh, very far. They couldn't see each other very, very far away. And what a hen wants to do, especially in the spring, is lay a clutch of eggs, 10, 12 maybe, sit on them and hatch them out. That's what they want to do. And so, as soon as she's laid an egg, she needs to find a cockerel to fertilise tomorrow's egg. And that's what all that noise is. It's saying, right, I've laid that one, now it's good. And tomorrow I'll need to lay another one, but it needs to be fertilised, otherwise, you know, we won't get any chicks. So that's what all that cackling noise is about. Are we loving this colour? We're loving this colour. And so they do that cackling noise and then the cockles who are sort of strutting around the jungle, you know, only being able to see a few feet, are going, aha, there's a hen somewhere. Where is it? Let's hone in on that noise. And so they find the hen do the thing which only takes about a second it's not a great it's not a great romance really and um and then that's it and the cockles go back to well they find as many hens as they can because that's what they're like and the hen thinks right that's good i'm, I'm fine now i can shut up now i don't need any more cockerels now that's good and then she lays another egg the next day now along comes domestic poultry keeping and we take the eggs away. So the hen lays an egg and thinks, great, I'll leave that there. Come back tomorrow and lay another one. And tomorrow she comes back and says, oh, it's gone. Where's that gone? I better lay another one. And so, because there's not a lot of brain going on in there, and I'm sorry to say, there really isn't. There's a lot of instinct, but not a lot of brain. So she thinks, oh, I suppose I better do that again. So she just keeps laying. I keep taking the eggs away. And that's where the story takes a different turn. Because I don't eat eggs. Not for any reasons other than the fact that I'm not so fond of them. I'll eat them if someone's baked them into a cake, I'll eat them. That's not a problem. Quite like that. I'm not baking at the moment. Because if I bake at the moment, I will just eat it all. And, you know, I struggle with my weight at the best of times. That's one side done. Are we liking it? I can't hear you all shouting, yes, Kate, I love it. But I love it, so I think that's probably okay. Okay, let's move it round and do the other side. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna try and be quite mindful of not getting paint on me 
no that's not paint on me or on the table because I haven't put newspaper down which I usually do now I don't need this beehive I just don't need it not yet but um, I'm hoping that as the season progresses I will um, because what will happen is that one colony of bees that I've got down there that are doing really well. I had a little peep at them again after after I'd done what I needed to do with them the other day. Well, you're late to the party, Norma. She won't like paint. I had another peep at them and they're doing very well and they're coming in and out and collecting pollen and all of that. And I'd given them this extra comb of honey. So with a bit of luck, they're all right. Norma, this is not compatible with cats. Yes, you might be crying at me, but this is, oh no. She just got some on her face. Oh dear, Norma. Come here, let me wipe that off. Come here. No, oh, come here. Let me get that before it dries. Oh, you silly cat, you've got a yellow face. This cloth was to get paint off me, not off you. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah, so the bees are good. So what might happen is, you know, actually harking back to that idea I was just talking about everything wanting to reproduce itself. Because with bees, uh, I mean, not solitary bees, not the ones that in you know, bumblebees and the ones that live on their own like that. They've got a different system. But honeybees and the bees that live in colonies like that, the way they reproduce. I mean, I'm just wishing on now. You can mute the sound if you like. <laughs> the way they reproduce is by, because uh, they live uh, in a cooperative way with one uh, female that lays uh, all the eggs, the queen. Calling her the queen gives this idea that she's somehow in charge. And do you know, she really isn't. She is at the mercy of all the worker bees. It's a very socialist society. The worker bees are in charge. And so they've got um, the queen, who is the only uh, being in the whole colony who lays eggs, one egg layer. And then we have all the worker bees who do every single job in the hive, everything. And then in order to have males, we have drones. And the, uh, the queen will lay um, eggs and depending on how the workers feed them and look after them, they will become worker bees or drones. Isn't that amazing? Or a queen. Uh, you know, depending on, on how the, the, the egg, the tiny egg in that hexagonal cell is treated, it will be um, a different type of bee, a different job in the hive. So there are a few drone bees, and if I explain to you how the drones and the queen mate, it's so complicated and amazing. We'll have to save that for another day. It's a really interesting story. But I'm going to tease you on with that one and tell you some other day if you're interested. And so the queen then uh, just needs a few drones whose only job it is, is to mate with the queen. That's all their job is. And once they've done that, they're, you know, they're redundant, really, because once they've mated with the queen, she's got all the eggs she'll need for her whole life. So she comes back to the hive and she um, just lays eggs for the rest of her life. That's all she does. She never goes outside again. And the worker bees look after all of these bees. Now, as I've just said to you about the hens, everything, every living being wants to reproduce itself. Now, a colony of bees is not one thing, is not one individual, but they behave as one individual. They operate as a, as a, um, one, one colony. You know, they they don't operate for for the individual. It's all for the good of the hive. It's going to turn it round again and make a, a pig's ear of turning it round. I'll stand up this time. So when they get to the point where they've got loads and loads of workers, more workers than they can manage in one hive or one colony, 
because they don't need to live in a box like this. They can live in a an old, a chimney of a derelict house or a hollowed out tree or, or you know, uh, someone's compost heap. I've got a friend who's got a colony of bees in his compost heap. Ted, who makes the candles. And um, he's just leaving them, letting them get on with it, using a different place for his compost. So what they do is, the, the, the worker bees, they, because they can manipulate these cells to become anything they want, they build a few cells over the hive. They build them to be bigger, to be queens, and they feed them differently, and they look after them differently, and they also make this, they build the cell up to its size again, because the queens are much bigger bees, longer bees and then a new queen will emerge it's got quite a time scale to it this i need to read up on this because um it's like uh, this number of days this happens on this day then this then this and i'm not fully conversant with what that is but what they do is they send out their scout bees to find uh, a new location and then um you know a suitable place and then once the new queen emerges because you can't have more than one queen in a colony because if there is more than one queen in the colony they'll just kill the other one and so the new queen will take half of the worker bees or so a good a good number of the worker bees and swarm and she'll take those bees out again she's another time she's flying she very rarely goes out of the hive but to swarm they will so they go out of the hive she goes and all these bees come with her and then they all just settle nearby on a uh, in a tree or on a branch or on a wall or on a fence post or something in a hedge something like that they settle nearby and then the scout bees come back and communicate to them in their incredibly clever way of communications where the um the next the good site is for the for the bees now what they've left behind in the old hive is possibly an old queen that, you know, is coming to the end of her egg-laying life, maybe two years old, three years old. Or some of these other queen cells might emerge and you might have more than one virgin queen in your, in your hive, uh, which is, um, you know, the swarm's gone maybe. And sometimes you can get something that's called a cast, which is where a second swarm will go, a small, much smaller one with a, another queen. So... This time of year, I mean, it's only April, but May, June, those are the months that I've got to be on the lookout for swarms. Now, when they come out like that and settle in a tree, and so I'm pointing over there because so far the three swarms I've caught have all settled in the same tree. It's been amazing. It's a low hawthorn. And so as a beekeeper, I want to keep those bees, obviously, you know, I don't want them to fly away. I think I might have lost one swarm in the very early days when I first got my bees, uh, when I didn't really know what I was doing. But now, especially being at home all the time now, I can be on the lookout for swarms and I can get sorted, put my suit on, wait for them to completely and utterly settle and then I can collect that swarm. And I did that, I think, maybe three times last year, collected swarms and then put them into an empty hive. This is why I need this, so that I've got some empty space for the swarm to live in. Now, I can't just put them in this box with no, you know, and they need to have something in there. So what I'll do is the combs that have been drawn out by the bees, I'll make sure that there are plenty of those in here, drawn out comb. It's very, it's good to have drawn out comb, because that's where your bees like to live. It's, it just saves them a load of time having to draw it out themselves. Hey, little creature, I need you to get off here because I'm going to paint you otherwise. What am I going to do with you, eh? I'll just paint round you for now and then maybe you'll fly off because you must have flown on. Come on, little guy. Ah, that's it. Flown off. Just narrowed down your options there, didn't I? So that's why I need uh, extra hives. I've got uh, a few uh, bits and pieces of hives that, um, you know, different boxes and frames and so on. 
but I really needed to get, um, well, I didn't need to, but I really wanted to make up this, this one. And I wanted it to be all pristine and gorgeous. And this colour's fine. And it's good that I'm doing it now because that, the bees don't mind the paint. They don't want paint on the inside at all. Leave it on the inside. Although I did read one thing that said that it's a good idea to rub it with beeswax on the inside just to protect the wood. I might do that. Uh, but um, they don't mind it, but I'm guessing they prefer it not to smell too strongly of paint. And so... Um, me painting this now before the swarm season starts means that this has got a chance to settle down and and um, you know dry and stop smelling so of new paint so badly. Well, there you go. I've been talking for 22 minutes and I've been talking all about bees. I might edit quite a lot of that out. I do love bees, though. I really do. It's so interesting. Their life cycle. Oh, got to go underneath there now. Another egg there. Another cockerel needed, please. Except I don't have a cockerel in with the hens. Because I don't like the idea of uh, eating fertile eggs. There's not any reason for it, except, you know, I, it just feels a bit weird to me to be eating something that could be a chick. Now... If you're keeping up with all of this hen stuff, my neighbour who moved and left his hens here and said I could have them. And so there's five more hens down there. I gave some to Anthony and Jack uh, and they've got them. So I've got five new ones. But what was also in with that, those hens was a cockerel. And he's stomping around in Eileen's pen. So you may hear him crowing every now and then, because he has had his run of all these hens all this time. And then once uh, Anthony and Jack built the exercise yard, I'm calling it, he hasn't got access to the hens at all. And I'm guessing that he's a bit fed up about that. Because, you know, his life really pretty much consists of um, reproduction. That's all cockerels do. It's the only thing they're good for. And I don't want that, so I don't you know, I don't want the cockerel, so I'm not sure what to do with the cockerel. He's strutting around at the moment. But as soon as anything starts growing in my garden, I've got to come up with a solution for him. He's a good-looking chap, but he's of no use to me whatsoever. So I don't know what to do with him. I give him some food when I feed Eileen. But Eileen's very fierce with him and pecks him whenever he tries to get any of the food. It's not just her food. I'll put it out for both of them. I'll just turn this round again. So this is the last side on the super, uh, on the brood box here. And then I've got the roof, the floor, two small boxes, two supers, and something that's called an eek. There's a box in beekeeping called an eek, and it's about that big. And it's a useful box to have that would go on the top of the stack. Uh, it's something that you could put a feeder inside so that the bees can get up to feed. So I'll paint the eek as well. And I've got enough paint. I'll be able to paint it all in this color which is making me very, very happy indeed. And I'm just hoping, I think that there's absolutely, there's not even a breath of wind today. So I'm fairly sure that this chat will be, I think this is going to turn into one of those long rambly chats while Kate paints. The sort of thing that you can just um, skip Or have on in the background while you're knitting, I guess. Oh, I made a mistake with the hashtag, didn't I? I should have checked before I announced the hashtag for Instagram. 
because of course there's a hashtag lime green sofa. Everybody who's got a lime green sofa tags it with that. And there's also a strange and curious tag that is LGS. If you go on that, there's all sorts of weird things I don't quite understand. So I've, I put it in the description, but I'm sure not that many people read the description. So it was worth reading the description, by the way, because I sometimes put some interesting things in there, you know, links to things and, um, you know, I'll tell you what the music is and all of that. So the description is sometimes quite interesting. It's also where you can subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't mind. Uh, it's also where you can um, subscribe and press the notifications bell. Uh, there's a couple of options, one where you get notifications and one where you don't. So if you click the one where you do, then you'll, you know, you'll get notified when I put a, a video up. Um, so why was I talking about the description box? Short attention span, or rather memory span. Talking about something to do with it. Never mind. Whenever I forget what I'm talking about, and then I go back in and edit this. Ah, oh, right, I was talking about that. The edit of this stuff takes a long time. Because I have to kind of judge how much of this do you want to watch, really? Okay, it might get a second coat. It might not, depending. So now I'm going to get that piece over there. This is the roof. And in the kit that I bought, the roof's already assembled. So I don't have to do any assembly of the roof. And also it's got an aluminium roof here which is covered with a protective film. So I'm going to leave that on until the whole hive is painted and dry and completely done. And then maybe a second coat, and then I'll take that off and we'll have a nice aluminium roof. so peaceful. There's such a lot of gardening to do. So much gardening. Oh, I'm going to avert my gaze because there's just so much to do. Everywhere I look there's another job that's going to take me half a day. But that's okay. I'll just pace myself. So I did some research to see if the bees mind what colour you paint the hive. And traditionally beehives would be white or wooden. And all the research I read said that they don't mind what colour you paint it. I mean, so long as you don't paint the inside, you just need it to be unpainted. But you can paint what you like. And I've seen some lovely um, painted hives doing that bit of research people who paint flowers on them and, and all sorts of patterns on the outside. I don't want to do that. I just want to have um, one colour. When I was talking about not having enough paint to do it, hopefully I have in this pot here because I've got lots of little odds and ends of colours of paint. There was a thought that I could perhaps paint it all each surface in a different colour. I've got quite a lot of pinks and purples. That might have looked quite nice. But actually what I really want is it to look a bit smarter than that. You know, not sort of hodgepodge and piecemeal. I think it's going to look good. So then I, I, I had this idea. Uh, I don't know where this one popped up from. Do bees sleep? I thought, do bees sleep? I don't know, do they? So, you know, you can Google anything. So you Google, do bees sleep? Yes, they do up to eight hours a day or, or a night. They sleep at night because, of course, at night time inside the hive, once this is all assembled, it's pitch dark. So everything they do is in the dark. And so there is no night and day in the hive, but there is outside. And so they're going out to forage for 
pollen and nectar and all of that. And so, um, yeah, they do sleep at night. Apparently they curl up and sometimes they curl up together and sort of go torpid. Because people have done lots and lots and lots of research on honeybees. There's masses of research. Yes, I thought I'd missed that little bit there. I'll just get that little bit before I turn it round. You were hiding, weren't you? There we go. Oops. The bits where I've nailed it. I just need to make sure there's plenty of paint in there. So another bee related job. I have to finish making those frames and there's 22 of those to make. So I made all the big ones. I have to make all the small ones. So I'll do that another time. I think it's all about painting today. I've got a lot of other things that I need to be getting on with. This is such a peaceful job to do, isn't it? And if you take care, now this is famous last words, because I usually end up covered in paint. You can see this paint here from when I was painting the white the other day. If you take care and take your time, then you shouldn't get paint where you don't want it. Oh God, why have I said that? You see me in half an hour with a great yellow streak across my nose because I've gone to wipe my nose with my paintbrush in my hand. I'm just gonna keep going, guys. So, have a cup of tea or something. I'm gonna sit down. And I'll be back when I've painted all of these. Do I like it? It needs a second coat. It definitely needs a second coat. It looks a bit blotchy over there. But that's okay. I think there's enough in here for a second coat. Yeah, I'm going to go and get a cup of tea. So, I'll put the camera back on again in a minute when I've finished painting some more of it but I could wait on like this forever I'm just gonna go and make a cuppa well I gave it a second coat and I left it to dry completely and I've assembled it here I think it needs a third coat uh, it still looks a bit blotchy in part to me and it's hmm, what do you think? Oh, the jury's out. But it was the only paint I had. And so that's what colour it is. <laughs> Take care, everyone. And I'll see you again very soon.